all right welcome back to my channel y'all and today as you can tell by the title we're doing something a little bit different so i'm here with a very old friend we've been friends for a while now and i've seen this guy transform before my eyes like i've seen him put on so much weight and i really wanted him to share his journey share some of his thoughts on what that process has looked like because i feel like it'll really inspire and touch a lot of us um a lot of us who are maybe discouraged or afraid to go down that journey this is someone who i've seen like i with my own eyes i've seen him go through this deploy the consistency and the discipline and i want him to talk to you guys so this is my guy eric eric medina how's it going how's it going my man my man bro so i have a list of questions i was gonna freestyle it but i think we're gonna go ahead and we'll probably lean on this a little bit yeah just start off with the questions you start know, off with the questions yeah keep confession on the beginning but all yeah. right so let's just start from the basics what do you do so what I like to tell people, especially when it comes to like the lifting aspect, I don't like to tell people, you know, I'm a bodybuilder, I'm a weightlifter, or I go to the gym. I simply just say I pursue bo bodybuilding, right? Mm -hmm. Because I think a lot of the times people get the terminology a little mixed up when it comes to that. You know, if people think, oh, I'm just, uh, I go to the gym, right? People who don't really understand the differences between the different categories like powerlifting, bodybuilding, or just kind of just, you know, calisthenics or just yeah. to train to keep it in your daily lifestyle they're just gonna think oh like he just lifts heavy weight or he just goes to the gym and and that's it you know what i mean but it's it's so much deeper than that yeah you know so for me i like to use the terminology pursuing bodybuilding because bodybuilding itself has its own definition right it's it's that discipline of not only when it comes to the training but everything that comes outside of the gym that's mm. what that's what I use to define bodybuilding is everything that you do outside the gym. For example, obviously, you know, I started uh, right when I was about to finish high school. So like in that mindset, you know, you want to hang out with your friends, you know, you want to get a girlfriend, you want to do this course, stuff. Of course. But I feel like when I started, this is what it means to do bodybuilding or to pursue bodybuilding is you sacrifice a lot of those things, right? You go into it and you just understand that when you take it serious, you can't have a foot in both worlds you have to completely step to the other side Damn. right yeah. and that's kind of like the step that i took and the leap of faith that i took to pursue bodybuilding is sacrificing you know certain relationships sacrificing you know a lot of fun time or just the enjoyment of like say you know eating out you yeah, know yeah. snacking being at home sitting there being like oh, i want some chips i want some oreos i want some candy i want some candy just yeah, sacrificing no. those things you know and that's what i feel the definition of bodybuilding or pursuing bodybuilding is it's just understanding those sacrifices and taking those leaps of faith to understand that if this is something you want to do how far you're willing to go damn you know because you have a lot of people that you can watch you know like you know rich piana stuff like that he was very well known for just telling people like if you want to just do it and Dope. i think to a certain aspect that simpleness of the way that he thought is so important that people need to understand because a lot of people overcomplicate the things that they want to do. Mm. Yes, it takes a lot of time. Yes, it takes a lot of effort. But if you just set your mind to, I want to do this and I'm going to get it done, all that stuff that you do in between, it's just going to not be easier, but you're going to be able to understand in all those times where you tell yourself, I don't want to do this anymore. But you're going to mm. understand why, because you're looking at the bigger picture, that more simple mindset of, this is where you want to be so this is what you have to do damn right yeah so it's like we you know when people tell me like oh, i love going to the gym you know obviously when i first started i was like oh i can relate to that but i feel now with how deep i am into bodybuilding and how serious i'm about it i said that i'm like really like you enjoy coming here because most of the time i don't want to go because i know what i do when i get to the gym I know the the suffering that I put myself through, and that makes me not want to go. Damn, you know, yeah. Because I'm sitting there and I'm like, I don't like I don't define myself as just someone who goes to the gym. The gym to me is just part of the process, just like eating is, right? That's why when people tell me like, how do you do it? How do you eat so much? And it's like honestly, I don't even think about it. I see eating and I see training as a part of the process because all I can see in my head is what I want to be. So I guess this is the first time we've actually talked about this. This is the first time I've heard you even put it that way is um, like for a lot of people, their end goal is getting into the gym. But for you, you're saying this is just a stepping stone. Like this isn't even like, like 
you're you're looking beyond just getting in the gym. Yes. So I I guess uh, then the natural question would be what is the the grand scheme of things like what is this a brick a part of like what is it building to? So if I want to put it into words, my longevity goal would be to coach. That is what I want to do. Mm. Yes, competing is something I'm going to do and I'm working up to it. But I feel like in the long run, competing is not where I, I don't want to go to Olympia level. Gotcha. You know, that's not my dream. My dream is to become the best bodybuilder I can be and not necessarily the best bodybuilder in the world. Heard. You know, because it's like all I care about is being at the most pinnacle kind of um person that I can be not just in bodybuilding but all around you know I want to have that fixated mindset that comes with bodybuilding that discipline that respect and that just appreciation for others because if you notice real bodybuilders who have actually completed and accomplished stuff in their life are the ones that help others the most because they understand the struggle yeah dude. right there's not like those people who are just big and they go to the gym and try to show that off or they try to act they try to bring somebody else down because they're big and the other person is not yeah yeah that's one of my that's been one of my peeves about gym culture is um like i'll meet people who are like yeah when you become a big dude then it'll be your turn to shit on people and it's like well is that really required like do yeah. you have to shit on people you know what i'm saying like that ego that comes with it and um it's really refreshing to meet people like you who seem to just have like a really pure heart about it and are in it for the love of it and you're not trying to like you don't you don't have like the ulterior motive of like dominating somebody or taking somebody's bitch or anything like that it's just like yo this is what i do this is a part of me becoming all i can be so let's get into a couple numbers though bro so what were you when you started and how much do you weigh now so i started let's talk about the journey man let's, let's talk about where you came from so ironically i started this month three years ago so i started working out february of 2021 mm. And we're now February, February 2024. So it's been exactly three years since I started working out. And I played the transformation, <laughs> not to cut you off, in those three years, y'all. Like, he did not look like this. Like, it's fucking crazy. But go, go ahead, bro. Yeah, go ahead. I, I, I played sports. I played hockey most of my entire, like, childhood growing up. So, you know, doing sports like that, it's a really extreme sport. You kind of, you know, put a lot into it. So I was always super thin. And mm. that, that was just my natural genetics, just always being thin. Um, so I started at 135 pounds uh, when, three years ago, and now I just uh, caught up to 205 pounds. So around 75 to 80 pounds. That is crazy. In, in three in these years. Past three years, yeah. In three years, man. In three years, it's 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 just been um it's been a ride, man. You kind of just you always have those little subtle moments after a certain amount of time where you just look at yourself, you're like, am I am I even making progress? Mm. You know. But yeah. the thing about it, it's a like, lot of people can relate to that. Exactly. A because there's just, there's really no timeline to this stuff. Yes, you have people who have these calculated timelines to give people a basis of where to like, uh, where to start from, right? People always tell you like, how long does it take for you to see like, you know, at least a little bit of progress. Right. And I tell people, you know, minimum six months, mm. right? But realistically, your body's different. And there's that thing, you know, newbie gains where people oh, yeah, can, yeah, yeah. your body reacts to you working out, to you eating more, that it reacts to it physically. So you notice certain things about your body, but the moment it gets used to it, mm -hmm, your body sweating. takes a lot more and it takes a lot more time for you to make that kind of progress. A lot more effort too. Exactly. So yeah. it's like, it's that whole aspect of if you're getting bigger, doesn't that mean you need to train and eat bigger? And that's what, that's what a lot of people get confused in. Mm -hmm. People, they're skinny like I was. They eat a lot to start off, and then they gain weight, they gain muscle, but they think they can stay in that same yeah, level. Yeah, yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. but it's not, because the bigger you get, the more you have to lift, and the more you have to eat, mm -hmm. if you continuously want to get bigger. Right. Because that, to me, that was my goal in my head. I just want to get bigger. I want to get bigger. Even now, it's the same. You, If you see me, you know, when I pose, I don't have these ripped abs. I don't have these veins popping all over the place, because... I don't need that right now. Right mm -hmm. now, I need the size. I need the base. I need to set myself up for success. You're setting the foundation. Exactly. So, not, no, no disrespect to a lot of people who compete, but I feel like there's a majority of even younger people who compete fairly early when it comes to their training. I've seen guys who compete after like two years or even just a year of training, Dang. and they think they're going to go on stage and win it. 
you know, because I've talked to a few people where they go on stage and they're like, ah, why didn't I place better? I mean, you've only been lifting for two years. Mm. A lot of these guys and some people hear you say two years and they think what that's a long time yeah. or like when you said it takes at least six months to see some progress they're like i couldn't imagine doing this for six months that's so long but like the part i i kind of want to speak to is the time flies bro yeah. like it's those three years that of you transforming like it literally seems like just yesterday we were at like the twins pool party like flexing on the roof before jumping in the pool like yeah. it's crazy how fast the time goes so yeah and it's crazy because even in that timeline there's so much that happened you know we all um met working here at olive garden you mm -hmm. know and it was just kind of like this little group thing here at work where a lot of us just became friends and then you know we kind of told each other things about ourselves you know like especially like when me when you when me and you met obviously you know you have, you have a pretty well body a well built body yourself so it's we kind of related in that aspect Definitely. of going to the gym Definitely. you know but it's something you would have never thought of because obviously like when we first started working here you know i was i was a lot smaller you know what i mean and looking at someone like you who has you know a nice well developed chest developed shoulders arms abs and stuff like that that's something that you like you want to talk to this person you, know? sure. you want to be around this person to see how they think to see what they do and then you know three years later you know it's like i come to you if i want some yeah. advice you show honestly, me appreciation like... and that's just kind of what it's all about you know because this friendship started off with the the similarities of working out and it's still going through that yeah our still our similarities are still have to do with working out and that just shows you that we both show real appreciation because i appreciated you know your physique when i first started working here and i was a lot smaller and now it's vice versa you yeah, know yeah dude and i think that's what it's all about because the size you put on is insane bro insane yeah man that i mean it's huge. just it's just honestly like if people can ask me a question like how'd i do it i can i could just simply tell you the basics of it man i just did it damn you know it's really like i said there's no secret formula to this it's just you either want to do it or you don't and i just wanted to do it that bad that yeah. i didn't care what i had to do i just had to do it damn you know and i think life especially in things like this it's all about balance you know earlier on we were talking about sacrifices you know and just for other people out there like you don't have to sacrifice everything about yourself you know mm -hmm. what i mean you just have to learn how to balance that you know, if, if that's something I would have been able, if, if, if I had a chance to tell myself something early on, I think that's what it ha would have been. All right, that was actually one of the questions. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, you just hit that. <laughs> go ahead, It's go just ahead. finding a balance, not necessarily just telling yourself. Because I'm going to be honest, I had this friend who was my best friend when I started working out. He was my training partner. He's the one who showed me how to be so obsessed and so passionate about bodybuilding because I saw how much he was. Mm. And a lot of the times when we would talk, you know, um, he would like this girl. And I would tell him, man, go for it. Like, she, she likes you back. Go for it. Yeah. And he would say things like, oh, no, I can't, man. Like, it's going to mess up with my bodybuilding, with this, with that. And it's just like, bro, look, the truth of the matter is this is something you want. You know, don't throw away something you want because you feel like you can't do it. Yeah. You know, because in reality, that's what he's doing now. He's with her and he's, and he, he's still working out. You Come know? on, man. And that's just something that, like, people need to learn early on about especially pursuing something like this it's like if you're extremely dedicated especially when it comes to bodybuilding or powerlifting or whatever it is you want to do if you're completely dedicated to it yes it does take them some sacrifice mm -hmm. but don't necessarily sacrifice everything about yourself you know because there's certain things you can sacrifice you don't have to go out every weekend right. you don't have to eat snacks all the time those are things that you, that aren't you those are just things that you you know crave or you want to do but if you genuinely have feelings for someone don't just throw that away because that's a part of you that's coming out of you you know don't just throw that away and sacrifice it because you feel like it's gonna interfere with um, whatever it is you're trying to do because at the end of the day when you really want something you're gonna do it and it's right. that simple that's how the human brain works when we want something so bad nothing in this entire world is gonna stop us from having it mm. you know yeah, so man. if you want to have a relationship and you want to do the things you want to do, you just have, it's not, a, it's not a matter of you can't have a relationship. It's a matter of you finding the right person. And I'm glad you're speaking to that because a lot of people like they'll see the weight that you've gained or like these people accomplishing things and their mind instantly goes to, well, this just must be all that they do. Like they must be sacrificing so much. And it's really cool to hear that. Like, you know, your homie, he was able to find that relationship and still hit the gym. And it's like, you don't have to compromise, like you said, like those core parts of yourself 
for achievement like they can coexist you don't have to like kill yourself just to achieve and yeah that's, that's really cool cool that you touched on that and at the end of the day man it's just honestly to each their own it's just that simple because i've met so many people in the gym that have come up to me and you know compliment me and then from there it stems to conversations you know even even uh, about a week ago i had this guy that has seen me a lot at the gym and I'm, I'm doing my training and he comes up to me he's like he's like man i see you here all the time and just the amount he's like the work that you put in is is insane Dude, you know he sees you and that to me it's so it, it's so good to hear that yeah because yeah i love that shit you just i'm doing it so unconsciously that i'm there to work i'm not there because i'm expecting people to look at me mm. but i'm there to work so when somebody goes out of their way to come up to me and tell that me that they're cool. noticing that yeah it's, it's just so much appreciation yep. you know and from there it stems to conversations about why they're there you know because the first thing that i always ask somebody when i meet them at the gym is why are you here you know because that's if you can't even answer that question to yourself why am i here why do i want to do this you gotta take a step back mm. because that's that's what interferes uh. with your life when you're doing something and you don't even know why right Damn. so when i have met these people in the gym my first question is always like so what is it you're doing this for yeah you know because if they ask me a question Perfect. i know exactly how to answer it i'm doing this because i want to pursue bodybuilding i want to compete i want to be the best bodybuilder that i can be that is why i'm here because at the end of the day What's so ironic is that everybody in the gym is walking different paths, but we're all in the same place, right? Because we're all here to improve, mm -hmm. right? But improving in ways that are specific to our own, right? Some people just want to lose weight because they feel like they're overweight. Some people just want to gain weight because they feel like they're too skinny. Some people want to impress a crush that they have at work. A lot of you us, know? a lot of us Some got people in just simply reason. want to live a better lifestyle. And some people, it's their dream to be a bodybuilder and yeah. they're there because they have to so that's what's so ironic is that people have these different paths but they're all still in the same place mm -hmm. you know and that's why i tell people if we're all in the same place then why can't we all just treat each other like like how how do you say it why can't we all just treat treat each other like we are in the same place because just because that person's a lot bigger than that person doesn't mean they're not the same. Mm, you know what I mean? We're yeah. all in the same spot. I'm resonating with that hard, bro. You know what I mean? Like, that guy's bigger, but what happened when that guy wasn't big? Like, you maybe you'll, you'll resonate with this, but I've always felt like, even at the higher levels of a skill, you're basically doing the, in a, in essence, you're doing the same thing you were doing as a beginner. Like a beginner is pushing their limits and they're going to the place of discomfort and, and hanging out there longer than they want to. Even as an advanced person, that protocol doesn't change. You still have to go to where you're uncomfortable. The difference is like the advanced person has just put more time into it. Like they've stacked more days than the beginner. But ultimately, like we're all doing the same thing. We're all pushing ourselves. We're all trying to grow and we're all suffering willingly. So exactly. like you in know, that sense, like we're really no different. Yeah, it's it's different paths, but you're still in the same place. Yeah. Right. That's why I go back to that all the time. It's Damn, like, that's really hitting me, man. Yeah, we're, we're all on different paths, but we're in the same place. Yeah, we, we are on the same place, you know, because like I said, whether you want to lose weight, gain weight, get big, you know, lean out like you're still in the same exact place like me someone who wants to get bigger someone who wants to be a bodybuilder i'm gonna look to my left and just see somebody who wants to lose weight mm. and we're in the same exact place he just finished using the same the same machine i just used damn you know so the way i see it is if i'm in the same place as this other person who you know maybe doesn't have as much knowledge as me doesn't have as much experience as me why am I not going to go up to him and be like, you know what? Like, let me help you out a little bit. Damn, You know, bro. let me show you a little bit of this. Let me show you a little bit of that. Give you some knowledge. Because if you see on my Instagram, my bio, it's simply just hungry for knowledge and passionate to spread it. Mm. Because that's what I care about. So going back to what my goal is with stacking these bricks, brick by brick, yeah. is that's what I want to do. It's simply just teaching others. It's spreading the knowledge. It's spreading all these things to other people that I wish I would have known when I first started because I've Crazy. coached a few people I've uh, had a few people under my wing I, I had this this younger guy who was uh, in high school you know and um, the reason I knew he was serious about it and the reason I knew he was genuinely listening to what I was saying is that when I would teach him something he would come back the next week 
and he would tell me, I tried this, it was fantastic. Do you have he something was quick else? Quick with me? The application. Exactly. Yeah. He would ask me for something else. He would ask me for something else. And he would send me messages. Hey man, like that thing you taught me today, like I almost threw up and it was just one exercise. You know what I mean? And things like that just show me that that's um, real stuff coming out of somebody. Yeah. You know, that that my now, my knowledge that I spread, my influence genuinely helps somebody in a positive way. And just experiencing that over and over again, it just taught me that that's what I want to do. Yeah. You know, I want Damn. people to come to me and be like, can you help me with this? Can you teach me this? And later on, come back to me and say, I'm teaching this to somebody else. Or what you taught me has helped me for the past two, three years. You know what I mean? That's what I want. So that's why coaching to me is what I want to do in the longevity of it. Right. I want to help others so they can help others. It's just Damn, a string, bro. Dude. Yeah, that's incredible. It's just a string that, that, that you want to spread. You know, it's, it's we're all, like I said, we're all in the same place. Everybody. So then speaking of that, this seems like a good question to jump to. Who are the influencer peers that have touched your journey or you feel deserve more recognition? Either or. Okay, so I feel, in my opinion... Um, when it comes to like, you know, like the influence type of like, you know, social media and stuff, there is this one guy that, um, you know, luckily uh, I followed him and he followed me back. Really cool dude. Um, you should check him out. He's on TikTok. His name is Elik. And the reason I pay attention to a lot of what this guy says is because in a certain way, I see a similarity to it in just the way that he thinks, mm. right? People ask him all these questions, you know, that he answers with the videos about, you know, about, they usually ask him about other people, right? And he just simply says, you know, like, like, ask me about me. You know, I don't worry about other people. You know what I mean? Because, no. yes, you can That's take dope. advice from other people. You can, you can, what's it called? Um, pay attention to somebody, to what somebody else says. But you can't just think that because that person says it, it's completely correct. Heard, yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, and this is the biggest thing that I tell a lot of people, right? A lot of people tell me, you know, when, when, when I meet new people at the gym and they're working out and say they're beginners, you know, maybe like a few months in, and they tell me, oh yeah, I just watched Seabum's video and uh, I'm gonna do his workout. And I'm just like, I sit there sometimes and I'm like, why, why are you gonna do Seabum's workout? I, I kind of get the, their mentality going in, but I do understand yeah. the skepticism. You know, it's, it's understandable. Like, it is, it's understandable. But this sure. is why like, I want to do things that I wish were told to me, to other people, mm. especially if they come up to me and ask for advice, yeah. right? So if people are telling me, oh, I watched uh, Seabum's video and his training session and I want to copy it. And it's like, yeah, that's, that's to a certain extent, I get what you're saying. But realistically, Seabum is not a teacher. Seabum is not a coach. Yeah. Seabum is just like us. He's someone who's working. He's, he's a competitor. Like he has to practice the practice because he's a competitor. Mm. If you want to learn, you have to learn from a teacher, which yeah. is who? His coach. So if you want to learn something, you're not going to watch somebody who, who is currently doing it. Mm. You want to watch somebody who is currently teaching it, and that is his coach. So people come to me and they're like, oh, what should I watch? What should I do? Now, so you need to research people who actually teach. Mm. People who, who take their own time to research and learn these things to spread it to other people. Those are the Word. people you need to be watching, Word. right? And the reason I say that is because that's who I want to be. I want to be someone who's sitting there with my hands crossed, explaining somebody to them. And not only not only telling them what it is, but showing them how it works. What's interesting about that too, to me, is like that's a less glorious position than like a C-bum or a competitor. So it's not like you're after fame or glory. You genuinely like, that, that's what's making me smile so hard right now. It's like you genuinely love the knowledge and teaching and sharing it. Even at the cost of like maybe not having like millions of followers or like millions of fans, it's like you just found your purpose. You're like, this is just what I want to do. Yeah, man. I think, like I said, it's just once you figure out the why in your own head, I think you're gonna just gonna be unstoppable. You know, that's why it's important for people to sit there and really ask themselves why they want to do this. Because mm -hmm. the moment they figure that out, they're unbeatable. They're unstoppable. They're gonna continue on doing this for as long as they have to. So the moment I figured out and I answered my own why is the moment I started making this progress. So I, I'd love to hear your perspective on this then because um, I didn't even plan on asking this, but it came to mind. Online, there's been a lot of like pressure for men to get into the gym, like almost as like an obligation where it's like, 
you're a man, you're supposed to be lifting weights. But like, maybe there are people out there who don't have a why beyond that kind of like shaming into the gym. What are your thoughts on that? On like, like that kind of motive to get into the gym where they're like, well, I'm here because I'm a man and I'm supposed to be. Yeah. Or maybe you could speak to that. I think when it comes to the aspect of being a man, I think it's extremely difficult to talk on the subject just because being a man can have can have different definitions for different people. Right. So if you if you were to ask me what it, what is a man, and why I consider myself a man, I think it has to do with nothing else but respect. Big big. Respect being one of them, um, and just kind of like a protector. I know that's cliche to say, but I think in my family, if I were to have a wife, if I were to have a children, I want them to understand that I will do whatever it takes for them. You know, yes, same sir. same thing with with our parents now. I guarantee you, if you sit there and you ask your mom or ask your dad, would they die for you? I guarantee in a heartbeat they would say yes. No question. Yeah. Exactly. You know, but I think when it comes to being a man, I think people, especially on social media, especially. Have, have really messed up what it means in, in, in those aspects. Because a huge thing, too, it's like this whole dumb discussion with men and women like trying to shit on each other oh, i completely disagree with that it's so, it's so stupid it's, so, it's so ridiculous because people just simply need to understand that men need women just as much as women need men mm -hmm. it is that simple simple as that it is that simple you have all these you know girls saying i don't need a man and you have all these guys saying you don't need a girl but it's realistically you that's what you want mm -hmm. as humans that is what we crave you're wired you're wired you know it. what i mean you because i guarantee you, you can ask any single person in this world and all they want is a partner to be there to love them support them take care of them mm. and be with them with any struggle they have to face mm. you know and i think the biggest thing in my opinion of what it means to be a man is just respect i think that's the main one right there because you just when you learn how to respect people uh, through anything, whether you get disrespected yourself, I think if you have that knowledge in your head to learn that respect comes a long way, not even for yourself, but for other people, a lot of the times if somebody's being disrespectful to you, what do they expect? They, be, they expect for you to react and be disrespectful towards them. Right. But if you learn that as a man, you have to set an example they're gonna be like, oh, why isn't he disrespecting me back? And they're gonna take away from that. They're gonna take something away. And they're from gonna it. be like, maybe I'm being a little too ridiculous, mm -hmm. you know? But yeah, I mean, respect is like a matter of life and death. Exactly. A lot of the time. So re I'm really glad you spoke on that. Yeah. Your respect is the number one thing in the world. I don't think anybody would get anywhere successfully if they didn't have respect. And not only that, but respect just teaches so many things, like like value and appreciation for certain things, especially when it comes to the gym. If I've spent blood sweat and tears into into accomplishing what i'm gonna accomplish why am i gonna shame somebody else for starting to want to do the same thing <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. you know yeah because you don't know maybe that person would would bleed would sweat and would tire themselves out more than i ever did mm, take know? it even further yeah. exactly so why would i shame on them for starting where i started three years ago and, and some people come from the mentality of well i got shit on when i was starting out so now it's my turn yeah. to shit on someone else like I, I've, I've seen that a lot of times too and a lot of people i don't resonate with that at all i don't fuck with that yeah they get into this mindset thinking that like uh, it was hard for me so it has to be hard yeah. for them you yeah know? no i think um like I said, it's it's so ironic because it all comes down to respect. Like if you just have to respect every everybody, dude, you respect people who are on a higher level than you just as much as you respect people who are on a lower level. Than dude, you, you know, real and shit. Real shit. it just all comes down to that, man. I think if if you just simply understand what it means to just be a simple human being, I think you're gonna go so far. And not only like where you are in life physically, but I think mentally too. I think when you mentally take the time to help others when you don't even think about it i think that's going to show you so much more appreciation when somebody even does it for you mm. you know when somebody goes out of their way to help you right you're going to take so much more appreciation to it because you did that for somebody else as well yep. you know i think uh people you know they talk about oh like karma like good karma gets you know brought back around and stuff like that yeah, yeah i fully invest in that honestly i'm not gonna lie to you i fully invest in karma yeah like for sure, man. I think it's it's it it just all comes down to the morals of yourself. Mm. You know, me me morally, I don't think I can be disrespectful towards somebody just to be disrespectful towards somebody. Yeah. You know, I think that completely defeats the morals of me as just a human being in general. And I don't want to set that example for anybody that I meet in the future, um, whether it's a relationship, a friendship, 
or even in the future going way into the future if I have kids you know I don't want to provide that example for them yeah. you know I want to provide an example of being respectful to every single person you meet yeah. no matter who it is because that's going to show you the kind of person you are but not only that if my kids are respectful to everybody that's going to reflect on me and that's going to reflect on the kind of person I am dang yeah you know so I think social media is a huge downfall to um people growing up especially because i feel like it's a little different when people are already like at a much higher age you know mm -hmm. where they can think for themselves but then right? to be younger and not have that ability to think for yourself <coughs> consuming all that content all that influence exactly it could be yeah yeah i see it because you yeah. have a lot of um it goes both ways man it's it's not women's fault and it's not men's fault it's just vice versa like both <coughs> both are doing really bad jobs at influencing the younger generation mm. a lot of women are talking about you know treating men a certain way and a lot of men are talking about treating women a certain way yeah, and that's yeah. so it's, fucked bo it's up both sides it's both sides because it's just not how it should be like people should just understand <clears throat> that there's good people in this world and there's bad people in this world mm -hmm. there's not men and women yeah no gender has like all the stock in good exactly. or bad people no, yeah, bro, yeah, like, yeah. Like, this is what I tell people all the time. Like, this world is is, 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 is a 50-50 world. Mm. Just as much as there's good people in the world, there's bad people in the world. Mm. You know? And this stems and they something... they come in all genders, all <coughs> shapes, all sizes, all ethnicities. <coughs> like, it's just good and bad people in the world. Yeah. Exactly, man. And this is just a, a little off topic. But when it comes down to that aspect of what I mean that this world is so 50-50, it's just the aspect, for example, if I had a daughter, I wouldn't tell her to just believe that the world is is you know this magical place that nothing bad's gonna happen because that's not true at all mm. i want to teach my my kids reality and the reality is that there's so many shitty people in this world that are willing to do shitty things mm. so i'm not i'm not gonna send my kid out there into the world thinking that people are just supposed to be good always because that's not the truth people are not always good yeah. right i'm gonna send my kids out there prepared for this shitty world you know especially if i had a daughter you know, having a daughter yeah, is yeah. so much more scary because there's there's so much there's so many guys out there who are just creeps who are just really shitty people. You know, I'm not gonna send <clears throat> it's Jennifer. I'm not gonna send my kid out there telling telling her you know like like people are just not supposed to do this. You don't you know? want her to be naive. Exactly. Be set up to be a victim. I, I'm gonna prepare my daughter, whether that's with a freaking knife, whether that's pepper spray or a gun. I'm setting my daughter up to understand how this world works because not only is it going to help her in a situation but she might be able to help somebody else in that situation there we go you know what i mean yeah so i think people need to be more realistic with what with, with uh what life really is and social media is completely screwing that up for people mm. because they're giving people this false sense of of delusion where they think certain things are just supposed to be a certain way yeah and like you said it'd be one thing if it was just adults but like yeah. you're really influencing people who can't discern reality from like performance you yeah. know what i'm saying they, they just they can't, can't really they tell can't they can't distinguish they can't figure it out exactly. even some adults can't figure it exactly. out exactly so. you know yeah yeah but yeah man let's get let's get going with yeah, yeah. Other, so other bodybuilding question. i think i have one more um we touched on you're interested in weightlifting okay so what keeps you interested in weightlifting and like from a mental emotional standpoint what does it provide you that's the last question we haven't touched on so I think going back to as well the the thing that I've said, um, I don't consider myself uh, a gym bro. I don't consider myself um, you know, a weightlifter. Um, and the reason why I continue going to the gym every single day and doing the same exact thing every single week is because I don't think of that. I don't think of going to the gym and doing it. I think of myself, <clears throat> this is where I wanna be and I'm right here, mm -hmm. I had to knock all this out of the way. Going to the gym, like I said, is part of the process for me. It's just something I have to get out the way. Mm -hmm. Because if I don't go to the gym, I'm not gonna be where I wanna be. That's but like emotionally, does it provide you any anything? Like, does it give you like, I don't know, pride? Or does it calm down your anxiety? Like, does it provide you anything on, you on that? You know what I'm saying? Um, anything on that level? I think personally for me, it doesn't do any of those things. Mm -hmm. I understand for some people, they can use the gym as a stress relief. Mm -hmm. They can use the gym as getting away from the real life, which is, I respect that completely 100% because like I said, we're all in the same place, no matter what what path we walk, we're right. all in the same place. When you get to the gym, it's a neutral level of respect. 
and it's a neutral level of just appreciation for others and it's that simple no matter what uh, why the reason somebody is there we're all in the same place we're all supposed to respect and value each other equally yep. and when it comes to me and my personal views on it going doing this bodybuilding thing just lets me know and lets my mind know that i'm capable damn and it teaches you that anything is possible realistically because this is what i tell people it doesn't matter what you do it does not matter it, it, this doesn't even have to be specifically about the gym mm. this could be about a job this could be about school this could be about career anything you want to do if you go through something where you give it every single thing you got and you sit there and multiple times whatever you're pursuing shows you that it can kick you down on your ass and oh, you yeah. still get back up and it will that's gonna show you more about yourself than it is about anything else it's gonna show you that you're capable it's gonna show you that you can you can start something new tomorrow and you'll fucking continue doing it mm. because you want to because you already stuck with something for so long you gave it oh, everything you got for so long that you know you could do it again and you could do it again and you could do it again for me the way that i think because of of how long I've been pursuing bodybuilding and how dedicated I am to it, I can sit here and be like, I wanna go to school for that, I'm gonna go do that shit. And you, you know? know, because of the suffering exactly. you've endured in the gym, and I know you can put up with that. I know the discipline of myself inside and out. I know what it takes for me to be disciplined. I know I've learned so many things about, about myself and that's what I wanna get to. The pursuing what I have been pursuing has not necessarily benefit benefited me mentally or like emotionally but it has taught me so much about myself it teaches you your limitations damn i would say you, those are mental and emotional benefits well, yeah like, I, you I, know I what I'm saying? you've you expanded like in in the three years too like i've i've experienced our conversations evolving like the way you're talking now bro i don't think you would have been talking like this three years ago like yeah like You've almost like grown up through like your weightlifting journey in a way, you know? Yeah. Like you've gotten a lot of wisdom from it, man. Because it just teaches you just that, bro. Like believe it or not, doing something like this teaches you respect. Because That's been a big takeaway for you. If you know that you're suffering, you gotta understand that somebody else could be suffering as well. And not it doesn't have to be in the gym, but somebody else could be busting their ass in that school to get the degree they wanna get to live the life they wanna live. That's another person that's busting their life. I mean, that's busting their ass. Why, why, why in the world would I disrespect that person? Just because they're walking a different path does not mean we're not in the same place. Mm. You know, yeah. you don't physically have to be in the same place as somebody to be in the same place as them, if that makes sense. You know, you have whatever you're pursuing and I have whatever I'm pursuing, but what do we have in common is that we're giving it every single thing we got. Yeah, we're giving it our And all. this is why we're so we're able to have these genuine conversations and relate to each other. Even though you're not pursuing bodybuilding like I am. Yeah, yeah, I'm more dance. You understand dance. what I'm going through because you're going through the same thing. Big time, bro. You know, because it does not matter. Whatever it is you want to pursue, you're going to go through the same struggle as somebody else. Yeah. And that's going to teach you appreciation. That's going to teach you value and respect towards other people. Because no matter if you guys are not doing the same exact thing, that person is still busting their ass for for whatever for it is it. they want to do. Yep. And that they're right not there, some bystander just watching. They're in the arena. They're exactly. out there fighting, and that's exactly. where the respect is earned, man. Exactly, man. So. It's just once it's given, it's gonna get received, and then it's just a cycle of all this energy being passed and forth. Mm -hmm. You're gonna succeed. I'm gonna succeed, and we're just gonna keep. And I really believe energy. in you, Eric. I really think you're gonna <laughs> succeed, man. So yeah, man. I, I feel I, like my phone's probably gonna turn off soon because of the <laughs> space. We're at 38 <laughs> minutes. Yeah, so man. we're gonna go ahead and call it man eric thank you so much where, where can they follow you on online all right so uh i usually post more on instagram now i did post on tiktok but i'm more on instagram now my instagram is just my name it's eric e-r-i-c-k x and then medina m-e-d-i-n-a that's all it is i post videos of my training i post my meals and stuff like that um so you know my bio it says if anybody has any questions dm me yeah. i do meal plans for people i do training programs for people and that's just kind of what I want to keep building off of in the future. But that's yeah, pretty man. much it, man. I and your just, future's uh, looking bright, bro. Yeah. I'm, I'm stoked to see what you do, man. So thank you guys for watching. Progress. And uh, keep up with Eric. And we'll see you on the next one.